Hi everyone, Mimsy here. I'm gonna show you today how to make a slip cover for that sofa and I've already gotten started. So the first thing that you're gonna do is make your welt and I will link to that video here. Let's get started. Okay, so for this for this slip cover, I actually took two different fabrics and made like a racing stripe on mine because I just wanted to break up this charcoal gray color a little bit and give this very traditional style sofa a little bit of a modern twist to it. So I actually cut this center part out and put this light color fabric in here. I sewed it in and then I did a top stitch down both sides. So that's where I started. But if you're doing all one fabric, it's obviously much simpler. So just your beginner start with one single fabric. So the first thing that I did was I took apart the uh, cushion of the original slip cover or the original cushion so that I could utilize the top part as a pattern. So I just used my seam ripper and um, took the top piece off of the, uh, the cushion. So I'm not going to go in depth on how to assemble the cushions because I have two videos on cushion making. So I will link to those in the cards above. Okay, so here we go. I've, I always start my slip covers with the inside back and I've marked the center with a little notch here and I measured and put a pin in the center of the back of the sofa and this is particularly important because I did this racing stripe down the center of my slip cover. So I need to make sure that I match this up down the center and then onto the seat cushion and then down the front of the slip cover so it's very important to mark the center of your sofa. Okay, so now I'm going to set this up and line up the centers. So get that notch lined up at the center of the sofa. And I've got my supplies, I've got my welt here, my pins and my scissors. I'm going to carefully bring this platform down and tuck it in slightly down here without disturbing that nice straight line that I... You want to tuck but not too deep. I like to use this same fabric from the inside back straight down and onto my platform in the front of the sofa. You could do this as separate pieces and put a seam here if you are short of fabric because obviously this deck here is not going to show. Your cushion will be on top of this. So you could use a less expensive fabric here if your fabric is super expensive. You could use something else for the deck. Okay, now let me see if I am in the center here. Okay, so there's my pin. And I'm actually going to measure this to make sure. I can feel my pin here. And it should be right at 11. And we're at 10 and a half. I'm only being really precise about this because I've got this racing stripe that's gonna have to match up on the cushion. Okay, there we are. I'm gonna put some pins across the back just to hold that in place while I cut arms. Okay, now we're gonna tackle this armpit so that it'll look like that. So we just wanna make sure that we have the fabric tucked in enough here that we're going to be able to seam this and tucked in down here and make sure that you get enough fabric around this edge that we're going to be able to get to the back. You want your fabric to be able to wrap all the way around the back side because we're going to put welt here and let me actually get you in a little closer I'll show you that. Here's the side of the sofa, the arm and this is the armpit here and this fabric has got to be able to wrap around to the back of the sofa. We're going to do our gathers here to match the gathers that are on the sofa already. So we'll just follow that. That way both sides are the same. So we'll pleat that up like that like that but we've got to cut this so that we have enough to get around 
the back of the sofa because we're going to put welt here all the way down and across, you know, across the whole top. Welt will go here, across the whole top. So we're going to make sure that we have enough fabric to get around this. Can you see that? Now we're going to take it across here. And then we need to make sure that we have enough fabric on the front of this to get around this T. So when you're cutting across here, you don't want to keep cutting straight out. You got to come around this so that this fabric will lay down on this T. So, okay. So, there we are. So that tucks nicely into there, that tucks nicely into there, and this goes around. Now I'll show you again how this works. See how that is, uh, you could do, on some, in some cases you could do like a, a dart there, but I am going to put a slit right here in the corner to open that up and you could do a little Y here and that just lets that lay down around that T and then of course this piece will go on and that'll be seamed there and there. So that's how you get around that T. This is how it looks with the gathers in there and this is how it looks around the armpit. So see how that tucks nicely in there because of that slit? And that slit, we could probably even go a little deeper with these and it would lay in there nice and tight. But I'm gonna leave it for now. And you see how this comes around the back, right here at the top of the arm. So here's kind of the, there, that's even actually kind of close. I'm gonna have to bring my arm piece. So this piece, the arm piece will come over and seam right here. I'm gonna make a pattern for these arm pieces because I'll put welt around the front of this. So I'm gonna make a pattern for this. And you wanna make sure that you are running your fabric properly according to the grain of the fabric or the pattern of the fabric, whatever it is that you're, you're going by. But And I'm going to go ahead and cut this an inch outside of this so I have enough room for a seam allowance. And I'm going to go ahead and double this up so that I can cut both sides at once. So I've got my selvage edges here. So I know that that bottom piece is running with the grain as well. And I'll cut this. Okay, 
there we go. So now I've got a piece for here and also a piece for there. So when you're doing the um, this placket piece here, you want to put your welt on kind of at the top edge of this. So you see how the welt on this, on an upholstered piece is on the inside and this fabric comes over. That's so that there's something to fasten, to staple that welt to. Well, when you're making a slip cover, you don't want to put your welt inside like that, you know, on the inside of that and have to do gathers here. If you put your welt kind of on the top of the curved arm here on the outside edge, as far to the outside edge as possible, when you run your this piece of fabric up to this piece and you seam them together, you can, you can ease the fabric around this curve and you don't have to do any of these gathers here, with this style anyway. Some styles you, you may have to do gathers. So, but that, that's the way I, that's the way I do it. I just put my welt on the top edge. That way this piece of fabric can just be flat. No gathers up here. So now it's time to do the arm. And you do the inside from the, um, kind of the crotch here all the way over to, because this is a rolled arm, I'm gonna go down to this point here and cut it there and then this side piece will be separate. The reason for that is you want it to be tight underneath here and follow this curve around and then this piece to start here and go down and be tight here. If you did this all as one piece it would just hang straight down here loosely and I don't want that. So I might even actually put a piece of welt here. And the way that you do that is you bring this piece back here and you're going to put a couple gathers back here which will give you a tight fit underneath here. Okay, and I've got all this fabric. I'm gonna go ahead and drape it on here and cut it. Some people will actually measure this, cut out a nice square on their table. I don't do that. I just cut right on my right on my piece. You might get a little bit more waste this way, but that's the way I do it. Okay, so you gotta make sure that you have enough fabric to get all the way around the back of the arm. So we're going to be cutting off a pretty good bit here, but you've got to get around the back of the arm and then we don't need all that down there. So we're bringing the fabric, see we're bringing it down to meet up with the fabric that's down there. Okay, so I know I've got enough fabric down here to make a seam here and my grain of my fabric is running perfectly straight along this arm. You wanna make sure that's that's correct, or if you have a patterned fabric, obviously you don't want your pattern to be running diagonally. Make sure we've got enough there, and bring it back, and I did not get enough, so we're gonna to have to bring this back further. Yep, now I've got enough to get around the back. Make sure we're, we've got enough here, here, here. Okay, now I can cut that. Okay, so I'm gonna bring it down underneath the curve of this arm and cut it below that. I like to give myself about two inches of, two inches of um, extra fabric for my seams. Okay, and now we'll go to the front and cut this. Gotta make sure I have enough fabric to meet up with the front placket piece. Okay. Now we can set all that aside. And we can start pinning all this. I'm gonna go ahead and sew welt onto this. That way I can pin this to this with the welt. So I'm gonna sew the welt on now. All right, so here's the front of the arm and I've got the welt pinned on all the way around. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this to the sewing machine and actually sew the welt on there. Um, and then when that's done, we can go ahead and start pinning all of our the whole body together. So we're gonna put a seam here. So I'll pin this piece 
to this piece. And then the welt, let me see if I can brighten this up some. And then the welt, so you see I've got the welt here. This will be pinned to this. So this, this piece here will be sewn to the welt here. We'll put a dart here. This will be sewn down, the welt will sew straight down here. That way this whole piece here will be one piece and sewn straight down here. Okay, so I didn't mention one thing when I started this slipcover is that all of your fabric is inside out. So you're gonna pin this with the right side down. So as you can see, I've got my, my raw edges here of my, my seams there. And this is now sewn and I have my welt on the inside of the arm. So you see this is just the the back side. So after this is all sewn and I install this slip cover, this arm is actually going to be over there because it's going to be inverted. So if you when with so because this is a symmetrical sofa that works. If you're doing a piece of furniture that's not symmetrical, this doesn't work. You're going to have to pin it right side out. Like if you have a sectional sofa and one side is a chaise lounge or you have just a chair that doesn't, it's not symmetrical. I'm going to pin this piece to the sofa. So I'm going to start by pinning around this piece. And I'm going to put a lot of pins here because we've got a curve and we've got to ease this. I don't want to I don't want to create any gathers here. I want this to be flat. With a slip cover, it's a good idea to put a lot of pins because um, the more pins, the better. Um, just to hold things in place real well because I'm gonna pin this whole entire sofa and then I'm gonna take it off of here and the whole entire sofa slip cover will basically be done, pinned together. Then I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and sew it all at once. So you want everything to stay together securely so that when you go to sew it, it's not shifting around on you or you're not losing um, your, your, uh, your seams. You could go ahead and pin sections and take it off and take it to the sewing machine and um, sew it in sections. I prefer not to do that because I think it takes longer. And I think the more that you take this cover off and on, it gets, the more you do that, the more it, get, it shifts around and you don't get a real good fit. Okay, so I'm gonna do the inside arm like the armpit and this part down here, which this part can be a bit difficult to get a nice, um, good join here. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take out a little bit more of this welt here. So we've got, see the inside arm? This is the platform. And then this is the inside arm and we're gonna pin these. So you're gonna make sure that you've got enough in there to tuck in to the, uh, the crook of the sofa. Now I've got quite a bit of extra fabric here which makes it a little bit hard. Okay, so this I'd say probably is the hardest part to pin and a little bit difficult to sew. So just take your time when it comes to this. Open that up, fold that piece back, slide that in there and just feel that you're tucked down into that corner real well. Sometimes if I'm having a difficult time, sometimes what I'll do is even take a needle and thread and just put a few stitches into this corner, but. So here's what I'll do so that I know 
where that exact corner is and where I need to turn when I'm sewing is I'll crisscross these pins. So I'll feel it and then I will um, pull that corner back out and do a little bit of a crisscross there so that I know this is the, the uh, crook and this is kind of like the armpit. So I know I have to make a turn here and come up the, and then you can tuck that back in. and just make sure that you're in there good. This just takes practice. The good thing is, is that all this area down here is all covered by your cushion. So if you don't get it perfect, it's okay. So you feel down there, make sure you're tucked in good and then put your pins in. So I feel it, tuck it in, feel it with my fingers, make sure that I'm tucked in, hold it, take it back out, and put your pins. Do the same thing, make sure you're nice and smooth, tucked in. And I put a lot of pins in, in here. Every inch or so, I put pins. See how many pins I've got in there? Okay, so here's the corner. This is the part we were just pinning. And we've got this piece here. And then this piece that comes back. Now, it's it's not really going to get around there. I'm going to have to cut into this in order for it to lay, to get around the back of that. So you see what I mean? This has got to come around the back here. So we've got to make a slit in this so that it'll actually get around that corner. So just cut straight into it. And because we opened that up, now this will come around nicely and we can pin this I cut this one a little bit deeper now that I've got pins in there and I know exactly where it is I'll be sewing see how nicely so I can cut this off and then I can cut this off. And then I can even put Okay, see how nicely that that lays down. All right, so we're going to close up this side. For this piece, uh, I was able to use one of the pieces that I think was cut off like right here or something. Okay, so now we're pinned here and this is not going to stay tight up underneath this arm really until we get this back on and closed up. And then it might be a little bit loose. So when you get this slip cover on, you can use either a T-pin or a um, one of those little corkscrew type pins to pin up underneath this arm if you want that to be a, a tight fit. But that's not gonna fit tight until we get the back on. All right, so now we just need to repeat this same process on the other side and then put the back on and then we'll the last part after I sew the whole thing I'll put it back on and then we'll hem it. 
So rather than a hem, I actually put a welt on the bottom and then I put Velcro, I sewed Velcro to the bottom side of that and then stapled Velcro to the bottom of my sofa so that I could just Velcro it to the bottom of the sofa and it would look like upholstery because there's welt lining the bottom of the sofa. So I just pinned on the welt feeling for the bottom of the sofa with my hand and then I sewed it on, I cut off that extra fabric and then I sewed on the Velcro after that. Okay, so here she is all finished and I'm pretty happy with the results. Um, I'll show you. So you see how the uh, welt is on the bottom. Let me see if I can get a little bit. Okay, see how that is? And it's Velcroed on there. And then there's the dart that we put in the front of the arm. See how that's nice and flat. And this part here is just a flat over the top of the arm. There's no gathers there. And then this part of the arm, see how that just fits right in. And then we have that seam there that we put in. And then the side, see how that seam is on the side. Now it's not super tight underneath there, but I'm okay with that. I think it's fine. If it were, sometimes this is, fabric is a linen, so it it's a little bit stretchy. So I'm very happy with that. I have it Velcroed across the bottom there, so it keeps this arm nice and tight. And then the back, which I did not show you the process of the back. So here's the, which I did the same on the other side. I didn't show you the process of putting the back on, but it's just like the rest of the sofa. I just ran the welt along this top edge. I sewed it to this piece, or I, you know, I pinned it all together. That's how the back of the sofa looks, and there's also Velcro across the bottom. Now on this sofa, I did not put any closure in here because it's got low enough arms that I was able just to slip the whole slip cover on um, without having a closure. But if, um, if, if it's too tight, I would normally put either a Velcro closure all the way down the back side here, like maybe up to about here. So I would put either a zipper or Velcro all the way down that seam. I'm gonna link here to the welt making video and also my video on how to make a cushion so you can see the process to make a cushion like this. It, the size doesn't matter, the process is the same. So um, I'll link you to that next. So check out that video next.